you get plenty of coverage of Oklahoma State football. You think you hear all the noise coming from Gallagher Iba Arena when you get your Cowboy basketball news. But you don't. You just don't get it, we You don't. And there's a couple of Jordans here to fix just that. This is the Cowgirl Coverage Podcast. This could be a podcast. Anyone with a computer can make one. Here are your hosts, Jordan Keene and Jordan Bishop. That is correct. Welcome into the Cowgirl Coverage Podcast. Jordan and Jordan with you as usual. The King and the Bish uh, with you, taking you through another uh, fantastic weekend, it has to be said, for Cowgirl Athletics. And we kind of ended last week's episode, episode 10. This is number 11. Uh, Hard to believe we've been doing this 10 weeks now, Jordan. But uh, we have, and we're into the second week in March. And uh, before you know it, we're going to be... we're seeing 80, 90 degree temperatures around here and, and true baseball weather and yeah. softball weather coming around. So uh, excited for that, obviously, coming up. But, man, we kind of previewed it at said it at the end of the episode was this is going to be a successful spring season. And uh, we're, we are lucky enough to, to continue to talk about it. And uh, there there's no doubt about that. That is uh, certainly the case. And this weekend was uh, just another good example of that from, uh, from the weekend. So, well, obviously, we have to start with softball. Yeah. Obviously, we have to start with one specific play from softball, <laughs> as everyone is around the country, including the MLB Network and some people picking it up on there and some people MLB.com. I mean, my goodness, Samantha Shaw is an internet sensation. And where do you stand on the bat flip, no bat flip? That that comes comes up just about every year, normally in Major League Baseball. This time, uh, the conversation started by the transfer from Texas A&M, and as you were saying right before we started, uh, right before we hit record, uh, she's getting a ton of coverage here that uh, she didn't get at, at uh, down in College Station. Yeah, yeah, she's the talk of not only the college softball world right now, but you mentioned it, MLB, uh, Yahoo Sports, Barstool even picked up. Like, it's national-wide story, and, and uh, I'm all in on the bat flip. I mean, that's what – if you give up a home run like that, and she just – clear skyrockets it's like if you're playing MLB the show it's one of those no that's one of those no doubt homers that you know as soon as you hit it it's gone and I think if you do that you can do whatever you want with a bat and so it's it's pretty amazing what she's done so far and this just adds to her legend that she's already had here in only a month and a half yeah and and again here's the difference that was not one of those, and you, you you said it perfectly. That is, that was not one of those where it was like, uh, is it gonna? No, that thing hit so far up on that net. And by the way, Pennington hit one up on the on that net that she could have done the same thing. Like she could have thrown thrown that bat as far as she wanted too. And uh, probably a good thing she didn't. Or Oregon might not have let him out uh, out of the state uh, out, out west there. And uh, wow, it was just man, she hit that thing, and I was watching it. I. I'm sorry, Cowboy Basketball. I was live streaming it during your game as I was covering it there from GIA. Um, but my goodness, what a what a bat flip! Just I mean, ten out of ten on the bat. That was one of the most impressive bat flips I've seen since Jose Bautista did that one that <laughs> that uh, pissed everyone off in the in the MLB. So that was, no, my goodness, that was awesome. Highlight of a a terrific week for Cowgirl softball, and we'll start with that. Uh, Wednesday, you and I on hand to watch a three nothing win. Uh, terrific from uh, from Clakely, Sprang, and then Shaw uh, in the uh, Mariano Rivera role, as you as you said. Um, and uh, I guess we'll play that audio since I have it. Here uh, here was uh, Coach Gajewski talking about the complete performance, as he called it, um, from the pitching staff. Got to get Clakely and Sprang some work against that lineup, and then also you had the luxury of bringing in Shaw as kind of your Mariano there for that. Yeah, three. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was fun to, you know, I told our team it was fun to, it was a complete staff game, you know, and that, that's the way we drew, drew it up. It doesn't always work like that when you draw it up. Um, but uh, I thought Sam was okay for her. Um, no runs, which is the bottom line. Too many walks, she'll tell you that too. Um, just wasn't quite as sharp as she was uh, this weekend. Um thought that Gabby was really good. It's good to see. I think you can see that ele- electric stuff that, that uh, she's got that with that drop ball. And she's if she competes in the zone, she's she's going to have um, success here. So um, it was good to, to watch that. And then Chow was good. I mean, she was she was throwing hard tonight, so it was fun to watch. So there you go. Jordan Bishop included his question in there to make sure you got the, uh, the Mariano Rivera reference. And um, that's the way she's being used. Well, she- She's being used in multiple different ways. I mean, she had a hand offensively and in the circle in all three of the games out in Oregon. She had a hand in the West uh, in the Wichita State game. This it, is this just a case because this is how I see it. Just a case where you want her to impact the game in as many ways as she possibly can, 
as many times as she can. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she obviously we seen her pitch in those that double header where she had the bat flip. She also had six strikeouts in the day, and she was using that Mariano uh, kind of role again there. Uh, I think in the seventh inning of the first game, and she just is somebody that you can have play at first. You can have play at right field. We saw that before. She play. She you have to have her in the lineup basically anywhere you want, and she can play in field anywhere she can. So she is just the ultimate impact player that they kind of needed every year before this now they have it it's too bad she's only here for one season yeah and and you want to get this as you want to get as much out of her as you can and uh you know i she is such a competitor i think that's what she she wants she wants to be in the circle every day she wants to be hitting it hitting third or second or whatever every single day like she wants that and i think that's part of the reason she came to oklahoma state was because she saw an opportunity uh to do that so oklahoma state a terrific week you get three wins out in oregon i was impressed with oregon i believe it was a freshman in the circle most of the weekend for them uh jordan dale she was terrific probably ended up throwing close to 250 pitches over the course of the two days uh she was terrific but oklahoma state their offense is just a little bit better and after talking about some wasted at bats and some empty at bats at home against wichita state and maybe a little bit in the first game against oregon uh, coach guy had to be a little bit pleased and obviously you'll hear from him tomorrow uh and media availability i would assume he's probably a little bit more impressed or pleased with uh, how the offense is um can't get the offense and the the pitching and the defense to all work out quite right or quite at the same time right now but uh that's got to be good you know starting to feel good at the plate if you can now pair that up with some some terrific pitching that you've had throughout the the start of the early part of this season you got to be feeling feeling pretty good as you move towards conference play yeah, yeah, and this Oregon team in the circle reminds me of Oklahoma State a couple of years ago. You know, they have a, a good pitch, and they're trying to ride her and use her throughout the complete game. But meanwhile, Oklahoma State now has the luxury of having three or four pitchers you can use in a game. And I think that's what was great about this week was this is a, two teams that you win a combined record of 0-5 against last year. You went 4-0 this past week. Um, obviously, lost four games uh, last year to Wichita State, lost one over Oregon. Got the monkey off your back against Shockers and go out and sweep Oregon, which is a big national win, uh, nationally ranked win, series win. And um, I think right now Kenny Gaius has got to be happy that he's able to get the games in first because that first Friday game looked like they were up in Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and also gets pitchers some work. And, you know, it's it's great that he's able to get these, get these girls some work in. Like he talked about a couple weeks ago, he was afraid that they weren't getting enough innings, but now they're clearly getting that now. And so I think overall you'll be feeling pretty well if you're the Cowgirl softball team. Yeah, there's no doubt about it, Jordan. And uh, one of the other impact players so far has been Cheyenne Fact- Factor. We saw kind of that game where she broke out against uh, – in, in that really that series, that home series, uh, getting back here to Cowgirl Stadium, she starts against uh, McNeese State that we were – yeah, right, McNeese State that was uh, – that we were at. Um, and uh, she – had a terrific game that game followed it up against northern iowa well might as well try her against wichita state drives in a couple runs against wichita state and does the same thing this weekend Uh, just a terrific weekend for her she was if she wasn't driving the runs in she was scoring them she's just been so instrumental and terrific to see that from a freshman Mm -hmm. and just different to see that from a freshman here's coach guyeski talking about her just being different (laughs) and uh and i think he had some really interesting comments so here's that yeah, she's just a kid that just um, – she has no heartbeat. Like, it's crazy. It's just like I've never seen a kid – I've seen very few few kids around um, in my time coaching um, that just walk around the exact same every single day. Um, the heartbeat just doesn't change. If she's not going well, it doesn't change. She may have a little bit of a shoulders down, but just the heartbeat doesn't change. And uh, it doesn't matter what the moment is. Um, it's fun to watch her, you know, and um, I'm excited about her. You know, she's a, she, like I said, we've been talking about her since last year and when she signed and um, she's a kid that's, uh, uh, can really hit, you know I mean? It actually plays a really good outfield as well. So yeah, I just, you know, that, uh, that's interesting, and and by the way, I saw that this weekend in one of the the games against Oregon, she she hit a home run. She comes out over, takes her helmet off, gets the home run chain hung around her neck, and she was not smiling. She did not smile. I was just like, holy crap! This is is she a machine? And, and, and no, it, it was it was just it was so interesting to see how she handles it and how she she acts like she's been there before, even though she's just a freshman. It's it's incredible to see. 
Yeah, we can start calling her the Kawhi Leonard of the Cairo <laughs> softball team. So, but she reminds me a lot of her demeanor up there. Uh, you know, of, of Taylor Lynch or Macy Montgomery over the past three years of, of covering them. You ask them what they're thinking of going up the plate, and they just think, you know, see the ball, hit the ball. I mean, that's all they're thinking. So it's very uh, mechanical, um, but it's it's obviously working for for her. And uh, it's great to have that from a freshman and impact player like like she's been so far for them. Yeah, so that was uh, – I just wanted to mention her because, again, Samantha Shaw going to be the big – and rightfully so, going to be the big uh, storyline coming out of the weekend, obviously, with her uh, antics, if you will. And if, if, if you're down in Norman, if you're in Austin, if you're in Waco – uh, you're probably calling those antics a little bit, um, but uh, if you're in Stillwater, you're just saying, "Hey, she's just you know, just play the game," you know. And uh, you know, interesting. I I heard earlier today on uh, on someone that was on the radio um, say, kind of like compare her to Baker Mayfield, and I, to a certain extent, you know, a little shot in the arm. I I don't mind that comparison. Um, Cowboy fans won't like it, but uh, that's the way it goes. If if she's on your team and she does that, you love it. If you're going against her and you're a rival, you probably don't like her. Yeah, yeah, and that's what you know. Coach Gassy talked about when he brought her here. She has that competitive edge, and she doesn't really care what people think. So she's just going to go out and do her game and do what she wants. And it's, it might rub some people the wrong way, but like you said, when she's on your team, you really love it. So And she brings that type of passion to this program, and she's brought a lot of notoriety to this team just in the past couple of days. So that's going to really help you out in terms of national recognition. Yeah, and again, I mean, it's not like – you know, you look at some of the past players, it's not like Shippy was, you know, totally straight line. You know, she was competitive. And you, you got to have that if you want to if you want to at some point make it to a College World Series. And that's obviously the goal for this team. So coming up this week, um, you hit the road again. You got the home game against Central Arkansas. You want to get that one. Uh, you obviously can try to continue and get a little uh, midweek momentum going because that was something that you struggled with last year. So big game uh, coming up on Wednesday at home, I think. I'll be out there. I think you'll be out there as well. So, and then you go uh, down to to Mississippi, and you're playing at Ole Miss. You're going to play Samford there, uh, kind of a neutral site game. And then uh, you're going to get Ole Miss down there, and a, a big opportunity down there uh, this weekend. Three games, and then I believe they play Monday as well. I'll I'll bring that. I'll pull that up in just a second. But just these three games, you go back on the road, and uh, you know you this is a chance now. I believe an eight game winning streak that you're riding. Uh, try to keep it going. Yeah, yeah, and I was texting uh, John Lingham this morning, their SID, and he's probably pretty happy about the uh, numbers this team's been getting in terms of social media <laughs> the past couple of days. But I called it their uh, S- uh, Southern Barnstorming Tour because that's basically what it is. And because uh, they're going to be going to the games in Memphis after this and listening to them talk about uh, last week about what they're going to do. I think they're only in town for the one day, obviously, against Central Arkansas. Then they're on the road just nonstop for the next couple of days. And it's. Uh, basically like a minor league baseball uh, circuit <laughs> with the way games you're playing. They might add some other games in there to replace some of the ones they missed early in the year. So it's a good uh, chance to, you know, obviously get some more pitches for some people, uh, maybe get some more people into the rotation in, in terms of batting, uh, you know, in the lineup. And then um, obviously get some more wins. Eight-game eight winning streak right now, just keep adding on to those. Yeah, and uh, I guess uh, we'll finish this up, and then I do want to bring up the the softball standings uh, as we have the past couple weekends, of course. But uh, Memphis, as you said, go out to Memphis. I know there's kind of been some chatter of maybe trying to get a another game added on when you're out there or something like that. But you go to Memphis after that. That's a Monday, and then two days off. But you're not coming home. You go to Tulsa. Uh, you're at Tulsa again, another team that you've struggled with in the past. They lose their pitcher. Hopefully, that's a, a good omen for the the cowgirls to. The, the revenge tour continues, if, if you will. And then you head down to Waco, and, and you start Big 12 play in a, a place that is not fun to go play over over down in Waco. Um, probably going to be some better weather, and uh, you probably enjoy some of that. Um, but, you know, the the fact remains, this is a team in Baylor, and probably a good as good a time as any to pull up the Big 12 so- softball standings. That's fallen to sixth place in the Big 12. They're struggling mightily, and uh, you might be catching them at a good a good time here to to start off Big Twelve play. Yeah, keep adding momentum, and uh, you know, like we said uh, in the past week, they are in their fifteen hundred win program win, which is second in the Big Twelve. And with the way they're playing right now, and the swagger they have, and the program that Coach Gaiski wants to have, they got to keep winning these games. Like you can do all these bat flips, you can do all these things, you got to back it up. That's what Baker Mayfield did. So I think that this team can keep playing with this edge they have right now and the confidence. Then the sky's the limit for them. Yeah, certainly. And we'll get to uh, Baylor 
in, in that game, that series, that's down the road a little ways. So we'll, we'll get to that, obviously. But the, the point being, they are on the road here coming up quite a bit before you get home. And, and by the way, you were supposed to have a home game that following the Baylor, Baylor, uh, pardon me, Baylor series against Wichita State, that's now an away game because you had to switch them around due to weather. And then you finally come back home and you got a couple uh, home conference series. But again, that's all down the road. We'll obviously c- touch on that on the Cowgirl Coverage Podcast, as we always do. Um, looking at the uh, top 25, they by the time we post this, they will uh, change it by the time you're probably listening to this. Now, hopefully we'll have this posted on Monday, but if we don't, these will all obviously change on Tuesday. So Florida State, UCLA, OU, Florida, Alabama, Washington, Tennessee, Georgia, Texas, LSU. Uh, in the, the top 10, you see some familiar names there. Texas, obviously, OU you're going to play. Uh, LSU, a team that you you hung right with. And then you go to the next uh, five or, or ten here, Louisiana, Arizona, so, uh, South Carolina, Arkansas, Texas Tech. There's another team you're going to play, Arizona State, a team that you beat, Indiana, Kentucky, a team that you beat. There's you at a 19, OSU, and then Auburn, and then James Madison, uh, Minnesota. Let's go, Wisconsin. Uh, <laughs> Oregon in there, who will fall out uh, following their uh, home sweep uh, or getting swept at home by by OSU and then Michigan. So still some good teams. Baylor's not going to uh, find themselves near the top 25 anytime soon uh, unless they start to make some noise in the Big 12. Um you know, but my point in bringing this up is that you're probably going to move up these standings again. There's a bunch of teams you've played in these standings and a bunch of teams you're going to play in these standings uh, in a tough Big 12. Yeah, yeah, and especially if you get a good series win against Ole Miss this weekend, that's another SEC team. Um, and so that's obviously going to help out your RPI and your strength of schedule. Um, but anyway, how does it feel that uh, Wisconsin, even though they are in the top 25, is still one spot behind Minnesota? Is this? <laughs> Rub your arm. Yeah, you well, you know what? It's just you, you can't you can't force these voters to always get it right. You know, they they're always going to make mistakes. This is obviously a huge one. To, no, uh, it's uh, you know whatever. It is what it is. Um, I'm just happy that they can play softball right now up there because you know we talked to Vanessa Shippey a couple weeks ago. No doubt that Wisconsin's dealing with the same sort of stuff up there. I don't know. I could pull up the weather. You know, we're starting to get 50s, 60s more regularly down here. They're still up in the they're happy to get in the the upper 30s and low 40s up there so um they won't be uh they won't be saying hello hello to dirt oof, for a while so uh, you know whatever it's part of playing in wisconsin so uh thankfully it's not the lady badger podcast it's the cowgirl coverage podcast so we'll move on here and talk about uh briefly about the uh the women's big 12 and obviously the tournament uh, a tough result and not how you wanted to finish the season out now different complexion moving on into the offseason as you lose to a bad bad Kansas team and really were second you were the second best team there's a reason you lost that it wasn't like it was some fluky loss you just came out and did not show the effort that we've been giving the men's team so much credit for showing you didn't show that uh, against against this Kansas team and uh probably now I guess there is some some scenarios where they could potentially make the ni women's nit now if everyone in front of them makes the tournament but that doesn't look like it's going to be the case per charlie cream here's the uh, tournament picture one seed obviously baylor four seed iowa state now if iowa state knocks off baylor tonight talking big 12 championship i'd expect them to move up to the three line probably and baylor probably still stays secure on that one line seven seed texas 10 seed k-state TCU slid with their first round loss to the first four out and then then uh, that moves West Virginia who also had a first round loss to the next four out so it, it does not look like this is going to be a six bid league like we thought like kind of like you had had said and uh, you just had some teams not win that needed needed those wins right if TCU gets a win they're in if West Virginia gets a win or two they're certainly in into the uh, NCAAs too but it looks like this is probably just going to be a four fringe five bid league yeah, meanwhile, K-State solidifies theirs with uh, with getting West Virginia uh, in that first round uh, win. And yeah, like you mentioned, I just don't think, and, and talking to Coach Hotel after where he, he seemed a bit defeated um, about how they play and the energy they came out with because we compare them with the men's team. They, they both had the same amount of conference wins. They had the same conference record, 5-13. and 13. But you don't feel the same about these teams that you do, even though they have the same record. And I think it's because of how we've seen, you know, the men play with only seven players, seven scholarship players, and they still play with the fight. With the women, it just 
Coach Attell said they weren't ready to come out. They they didn't act like it, and he said that was on him. It just seems like it was a lost season. I mean, you had, I think, 12 of the last 14 lo- of the games were losses. Uh, so it wasn't like it was just a fluke to lose to Kansas, like you mentioned. And they came out of the gates just completely sluggish on defense. The 30, gave a 30-10 spot to KU. So, yeah, it's just a um, it's a time where you don't feel – you don't know what's going to happen. But uh, at least like we had Coach Ann on last week, they have some good recruits coming in. So we'll see what happens then. But, you, uh, yeah, it's not a good way to end the season. I think the season is over because based on uh, based on what they put in the official release, so OSU did after that game, it said season-ending loss. So if even the team is saying that. And it's a 14-16 record, their worst record since 2005 when they won six games. Their first time they missed a postseason since 2005, if it happens. I don't see them making a WNT with a losing record. Um, so it's overall just – don't feel very well about things right now, but we'll see what happens in the future. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And you, again, comparing again, if as you kind of did there, comparing the two teams, the men's team, both these teams have very similar, except for the expectations. And I think while the men, you know, Boynton came out and said we're we're trying to we will exceed this tenth uh, in the league coaches poll, we're going to exceed that. Um, while he said that, I think there was still some skepticism from the fans that he could. The fans of the Oklahoma State women's team, they expected them to ex- out, uh, outperform their 7th or 8th or whatever they were predicted in the league, and they, they underperformed. So it's, you know, you have to say it was a disappointing year for the Cowgirl uh, basketball team. There's no doubt about that. So, again, we'll see how this shakes out. Um, Iowa State, Baylor tonight, you'd expect – uh, Baylor to come out with that fairly easily, but again, Iowa State's a, a quality team with the best player in the conference, So, um, and I think the best coach in the conference this year. I think you do too. So let's move on to tennis. Um, Chris Young's crew gets gets back onto it in a big way. Um, I think these were two kind of fringe top 50 teams uh, as far as uh, Gonzaga and, and Wichita State go. Took care of them. Gonzaga got two points. Um, Five two, you probably don't feel great about that, but a win is a win is a win, as they say. And then you sweep uh, Wichita State on the road. Uh, Mike. Yeah, yeah, and uh, they were both, I think, in the thirties. Uh, Gonzaga, Wichita State, and Gonzaga had a coach. Coach Young mentioned they had a good doubles lineup, so they had some good uh, good pieces to work with. So I think that's a good match, and he's probably happy they get to play out all seven matches just to see what what's happening. Um, it's a team that I think is completely different. I'm out to this last week, completely different from the one we saw. You know, a month ago, and that might be unfair to say because they were four and five, but they played. They still have played the toughest schedule in the country. But this team on this winning streak they're on right now, uh, nine and five, and just overall, I think they're completely healthy. They're just playing with a lot of confidence, and they got a big match on Friday, which I'm going to be at covering home match against Kansas, which is a team that in the past couple of years has risen considerably in the women's tennis rankings, uh, and is actually a Big Twelve, uh, you know, really strong contender right now. So I think that's gonna be a good match on Friday here, and hopefully it's gonna be outside. See how the weather works out. And you could argue this is the uh, the Big Twelve match of the year happening right off the bat because these are, I believe, the top two indoors teams, right from from the Big Twelve. Yeah, yeah. And and so you you match them up right away, uh, and hopefully, like you said, outdoors. And it looks like this weekend's weather should be nice enough for that. So you hope, obviously, weather does its own thing. So you can't uh, totally, you know bank on anything i suppose but uh that's a nice thing you do have the uh, the nice brilliant facility over there that uh if if you do have to go inside you can more than capable of doing that so and then uh on sunday another home home game against uh or match i suppose against k-state so you got the uh the kansas tour coming in and uh kansas kansas state um obviously not the quality of kansas uh, we all know that but you still still a match you got to go out and take care of business and and make sure that you can continue momentum assuming that you are able to get it done against kansas yeah and this is a team that we've mentioned plenty of times of how all the new pieces are together this isn't the old guard that they had for the past four or five years i think you get this win against kansas and then you go out and get kansas state it's just another add-on to the streak and you just add confidence because that's all this tennis is such an individual game that Confidence is a huge factor into how people play. If you go on a losing streak, then you might not play well. So if they keep winning and keep bolstering that confidence, that edge, then they'll keep coming out and just keep taking and, and playing with uh, you know no fear. And that's what they need to, need to be doing. 
Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Uh, Cowgirl soccer, move on to the soccer uh, scene here really quickly. OSU welcomes an SMU, probably their uh, their first, you know, big game coming up for the spring. Obviously, um, UCO is UCO, and, and uh, you get that 2 nothing win. Probably not as convincing as some people would want, but, it, you know, again – the main thing you're trying to get out of this is not wins. You're trying to make sure that uh, you can, st- one, stay healthy. That's been a struggle for this team in the fall. So, again, you're 2-0 and here in the spring season. You finally get SMU in here. You're going to have Tulsa in next week as well. So uh, these are the games where I think you're going to find a little bit more about yourself, and that's why you have them near the end, uh, and then Arkansas Little Rock as well. That's why you have these at the end of the spring schedule, rather at the beginning, because you get your legs back underneath you. You kind of get the the t- the feel of the ball back and and for a lot of these girls that that never leaves but um you're you, you're back into the swing of things right and you play a couple games you got a couple practices under your belt now you start to get the smus the tulsas these kind of teams yeah yeah and uh i just think overall it's the team like with the tennis team you just kind of mixing, mixing some people in there and just kind of see what they have and uh like you mentioned that they're obviously without kim rodriguez she's off doing that uh, great stuff for the national team down there. So uh, it's it's overall I think it's going to be the first good test, like you said, bringing in here. Yeah, and uh, I don't mean to undermine your comment by any means, but Kim Rodriguez had the goal and uh, oh. and an assist, so she was back. But okay. uh, but to your point, you know she <laughs> made herself made herself known uh, coming back here and, and finally playing uh, for the the cowgirls again. She is obviously in my opinion, one of the more advanced skill and intellectually as far as college soccer players that I've seen, men's or women's, and that, there's a reason she's playing huge games over in Cyprus or wherever wherever the wherever they were for that. But, again, good to see her back. As, as you said, finally getting getting her back into the fold is going to be nice for this team. Yeah, and if, now, now that I know she's back, thank you for actually doing the research. <laughs> I just assumed that was like a full spring commitment or something. But uh, now that she's back, hopefully we can get her on the podcast soon and then be a great interview and see how that was over there in the international competition and what she's thinking of looking at this cowgirl team this fall. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, we'll probably work on that, see if we can't do that coming up here uh up here soon so again smu coming up tulsa will be after that um and then i don't believe we've had uh golf finish 16th uh over and i believe that was the uh, darius rucker out there in south carolina the uh anyways we we had that conversation already uh, darius rucker uh sponsoring a women's golf tournament and good on him but uh um 16th it's not great um i didn't see what other teams were there i'll try to pull that up quickly and just but 16th of 17th is not something that uh, obviously a program is trying to strive for. Yeah, yeah, and I think they get another week off before they go to another tournament. But we mentioned before it's hard with a young team, and I think this is a very disappointing weekend if if you're uh, the Calgary, Calgary golf team because it's the one that you expect to go in there with a bit of momentum. They they have finished you know in the middle of the pack in a lot of tournaments, and then they just finished basically almost dead last. Just only above the last team there. It's, it's got to be a bit of a heartbreaker, but hopefully uh, they, they keep their head up. Um, still got a lot of young players to uh, you know to build around, so it's not the end of the world. No, and again, young team. We yeah. talked about that earlier. So 57 over. North Carolina was 59 over. The next closest above them was Baylor, 49 over. So you know there was a little bit of a difference um, between between them and that next group of teams, which was in that 35 to 45 ish, 49 ish range. Uh, you were a little bit above that. So obviously some things to work on, and um, you want to correct those uh, coming up here as well. So again, we'll, we'll uh, we will remind you, pardon me, of the upcoming for um, equestrian. Because coming up at the end of the month, uh, 29th and 30th are the Big 12 championships. So we told you about their uh, their win over Fresno State and uh, a big win there, 14 to five. That's uh, you keep the momentum rolling at home, which is where the Big 12 championship is, and uh, you got to feel pretty good uh, heading into Big 12s. And then after that, nationals coming up mid April. Yeah, it's a good senior day win, like we mentioned. Just keep it rolling. They look like a completely different team this spring. Like when we said the Calgary uh, tennis team was kind of a completely different team this team is a completely different team the way that they're out there performing right now and they're a team that at the beginning when we started this podcast we're thinking oh hopefully they make nationals hopefully they even you know make it win win something there they might win it all again you know the way they're playing right now so we'll see what happens 
Yeah, so again, wanted to touch on that. I believe that covers most of it here in the uh, the spring slate. And again, it's a busy slate, and we, uh, we'll keep the, the interviews coming for you. Bish had a, a busy week. I had a busy weekend and a busy week coming up as well. So uh, no interview this week, and we hope you uh, you enjoy us droning on for a little bit. We did get some uh, some Coach Gajewski in there uh, from the, uh, the last prior week, and uh, – you know, again, this softball team it looks like it's going to be a contender. And uh, you start talking about where this team is ranked, both ESPN and coaches' polls, where I'm excited to see where they are in both those polls coming up here tomorrow. Um, but you start talking about being in that 15 to 12-ish range, you, you should be hosting a regional. You do that. Anything can happen in a super regional if you take care of business at home, which is such a – I think a comfort for a team like Oklahoma State, where if you get it, you get things rolling. Uh, one thing snowballs into another. You get a, a bounce here and there. Uh, this could be potentially a top eight team. Yeah, it's a team that you know they keep adding to the RPI, uh, which is a big factor in regionals and super regionals. There, I think it's gonna be a bit. They're gonna be fighting for super regional um, because I don't know if the NCAA is gonna have both of them in the same state because we know this one's probably gonna be down Norman. So I think that if um, Oklahoma State just continues to play the way they're doing right now and, you know, has the winning percentage they have right now at the end of the year, it's going to be hard to deny, to deny them, especially if they get past that regional round in dominating fashion, to not give them a super regional. Yeah, and again, that would just be a bonus. You know, that's just a, that's a icing on the cake there for them. So you get a regional, even if you got to travel somewhere for a super, you got to feel pretty good about it if you do get that regional and and, and win it. So um, hopefully for the Cowgirls' sake they continue this, and uh, I know you and I will be out there all season long uh, hoping for the best for this team, and it certainly looks like they are on the right path. So end of the basketball season, um, you know, again, the second half not quite as good, you know, different programs have uh, responded differently to the cowgirl coverage podcast it seems like basketball started losing as soon as we we started it apologies to them but uh hey we're, we're the equestrian lucky charm like you said we we started the podcast and the equestrian has responded really well we probably need to get uh one of them on here uh too coming up as well before uh big 12s if they win it and especially if they win it and then maybe nationals as well so um i think that hits just about everything jordan another great week uh episode 11 all set as we uh start to move into some warmer weather here in the spring it's actually starting starting to feel like spring yeah yeah definitely it was so so nice this past weekend to actually get some sun and not get that crazy north wind that has been out of the past few Calgary softball games. So they didn't get very much of that weather, though. They left Oklahoma and had to go back to the cold weather in Oregon. So hopefully they get some good weather going soon down here in Mississippi. Yeah, it was, inter- <laughs> it was interesting. I, uh, I, was, uh, I was listening on Friday night. I was watching the game on the Pac-12 Plus, whatever, their uh, Oregon student-produced thing. And uh, they said that uh, – they had gotten a tip from someone watching in Stillwater, said it was 9 degrees in Stillwater. I was like, I don't know who gave you that tip, but they must have been up in Stillwater, Minnesota. I'm not really sure. So uh, we had a beautiful weekend down here, but they were they were battling freezing temperatures or just about up in Oregon all weekend long. So good weekend up for there for them. Uh, Cowgirl basketball bows out uh, for their season. Cowgirl soccer continues. Tennis as well, getting back on the winning track. So a lot of success here in the spring, and uh, we're lucky to uh, talk about it here on the Cowgirl Coverage Podcast. For the Bish, I am King, and uh, thanks for joining us. On episode number 11, we'll, we'll be back next week with episode 12 on the Cowgirl Coverage Podcast on the Triple Play Sports Podcast Network. Network.